All right. I was discussing earlier in the program, the Supreme Court released uh, several major decisions today, including a unanimous decision in Groff versus DeJoy. This case was brought by a former mail carrier, uh, Gerald Groff, who was denied religious accommodations to observe the Sabbath. Well, joining me now is Gerald Groff and his attorney, uh, Randy Wanger. Uh, who uh, is a part of uh, actually working with First Liberty in this case. He was a co-counsel. Uh, Gerald and Randy, welcome to Washington Watch. Good to see you. Congratulations uh, on the case today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, before we get into the details, um, uh, Gerald, let me, can I just get your reaction to uh, today's the decision? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great moment uh, for America, for religious freedom. I'm just overjoyed to be a part of this moment and uh, just to rejoice that no one else should have to go through what I have to now, now that the court has spoken. Of course, you were willing to stand for your a religious accommodation, which is guaranteed you under the Constitution, and difficult as it was, you prevailed, and others will benefit from that. Randy, you, you and I have talked about this case before. You, we've, uh, you've been on the program. Tell us about what the court decided today and the implications here for religious freedom in the workplace. Yeah, this is a landmark decision because 50 years ago, the uh, Congress um, ended up passing a law to protect religious workers so that so that employers would accommodate religious workers in the workplace unless it created an undue hardship for the employer. But the Supreme Court, in a case called TWA versus Hardison 46 years ago, really cut back on those protections that Congress had envisioned and, and basically said if there was anything more than, than a, a de minimis burden to the employer, the employer didn't need to do anything for the employee. And, and that was essentially telling all religious workers in America, go pound sand. And thankfully, this Supreme Court really got it right today and has restored the original meaning back in into the Civil Rights Act so that so that religious workers in the workplace are finally protected. So this case, this decision in this case goes far beyond Gerald's case in that this will guarantee that reasonable accommodation has to be made and they said except for the cases of an undue hardship. So what does that what does that mean? Yeah, and that's really that's really what the case was all about, where the solicitor general had been arguing all along that de minimis was the standard. Undue hardship just meant anything more than than a de minimis burden, but that doesn't make any sense. And so Alito, Justice Alito, writing for the court, um, said, "No, no, no. the The standard really is if it's if it's creating a." a substantial burden, a substantial cost on the employer. So it puts the balance back into place that, that people would have thought existed in the first place, okay. that, that an employer needs to come to the table. They need to try to make things work for the employee. And so whether the case is, is a Sabbath accommodation like Gerald's case or so many other areas where, where religious Americans are having issues in the workplace, this this now creates a solution. You see that that given the backdrop to this growing intolerance and hostility toward religion, that makes this decision even more significant as I view it. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. We're we're in an era right now of of growing secularism where people don't understand the the religious obligations that religious people have in the workplace. And so employers are asking more and more, not really understanding the impossibility that that creates for, for a religious employee, like, like Gerald, who this isn't just an issue of, hey, I've got a preference to not work on Sunday. It's, I can't work here unless you make a way for me to do this because I've got a religious conviction. And so, so this standard is going to make it a whole lot easier for employees to follow their convictions and not have to give up their jobs. And that is encouraging, uh, because while we have a shrinking subset of Americans who hold those religious convictions with such sincerity, they still 
uh, should be respected as that's what the First Amendment is about. Gerald, again, congratulations. Thank you for uh, being willing to stand for religious freedom in this country. This is how we preserve it. And, uh, and Randy, thank you uh, for the great work that you've done. This is not your first rodeo, uh, but you've been faithful and uh, we're grateful for you. Well, God is good. We're grateful for the victory. Yeah, thank you very much.